A very warm welcome to you on Space and Style, your gateway into the world of real estate, architecture, interior design trends, and much more. My name is Olamide Onifade, and today we are going to be having an amazing discussion about a part of the home that delights me the most, and that is how to design efficient kitchens. And also on the show later on, the design tip segment, Joy, an interior decorator, will teach us on how to declutter. Welcome back to the show and moving on into our discussion today. The kitchen was once an area dedicated to only cooking, but in recent times, kitchens have evolved themselves as the heart of the home and a beehive of different activities. A well-thought-out kitchen will combine elegance, aesthetics, and functionality. So while it is important to consider the decor and the interior styling of your kitchen, the layout and practicality must be a fundamental consideration, as the layout of your kitchen is what makes a kitchen design successful Successful. And to discuss this topic with me is Joylyn Agbamuchi. She's the CEO of Home Affairs Designs and a graduate of the British College of Interior Design in the United Kingdom. She specializes in designing smart and sustainable kitchens that inspire happiness, health, and well-being. She has over 10 years of experience. Thank you, Joy Agbamuchi, for Joylin, sorry. Yes, Joy <laughs> I've never heard of Joylin, I've heard of Joy. Yeah, What's the difference? It's, um, they, are, they, they mean the same thing. Wow. <laughs> but then the other one is unique. I, I've only met one person mm -hmm. with that name. Wow. <laughs> yes. Okay, so to jump in into the discussion because we barely have time. Yeah. What is a practical kitchen? What are the considerations when you want to build an efficient kitchen? Where should you be starting from? Okay, um, very good. Where to start from is actually your budget, okay? Mm -hmm. So because you have to check how much you have in your account, how much you want to invest. So I say invest, not spend, because you're investing in your home, you're investing in your life. So check, um, start with what you have, how much you can spend, because that will determine the kind of cabinet you want to um, use that will determine the appliances, whether it's high end, low end, or medium end. It, it determines a lot of things. So that's where you start from your budget. And then you move to another thing to, this, to, to um, consider is your lifestyle. It comes, uh, lifestyle has to do with the usage. How do you use the kitchen? Um, how often do you cook and, um, you know, uh, do you entertain a lot because it affects the layout, the, you know, affects so many things, okay? And um, you also consider the size. Of, of your family. Yeah, the size of your family. And then you, you consider the size of, of, of the kitchen that you want, okay? And then um, the functionality, what are the mm. activities? That, what kind of activities are you, do you plan to carry out in that kitchen? Do you want to be entertaining? Do you want to be cooking and have friends and family over, you know, just sitting somewhere cozy whilst you're cooking? Do you want your kids to do their homeworks in the kitchen whilst you're cooking? Do you want to sometimes work there? Do you want, to, you want it to be comfortable? So all of those things, you bring them into consideration before you start to build. So those are things, some of the things you look at. When okay, planning so your kitchen. I know, of course, that there are different layouts in the kitchen and it affects how functional the kitchens are. Yes. So from your perspective, okay, I want you to take us through the different kinds of layouts and tell us which one is the best. Well, first of all, I'll start by saying that the layout of a kitchen, uh, the best layout of a kitchen for you is the one that works for you and the one that is functional. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll, I'm going to go through the types of layouts and you now decide what works for you and what's functional for you because I can't choose your own layout except I really, really know um, your lifestyle and everything and the kitchen side. So we have, we have like um, four to five, like I, 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 I will mention, we have the one wall uh, layout. That's so just, what's that? You just have your 
cabinet on one wall. So that works for a kitchenette. You know, in, in modern homes now, we have two, we now have two kitchens. One is a major kitchen downstairs where you cook and everything. Then we have a small kitchen upstairs no, called that's the kitchen. dry kitchen. Yes. Or the dry kitchen, if oh, I'm I, correct. I, I call it um, kitchenette. Okay. So the kitchenette is just a small kitchen upstairs. So maybe at night, you don't want to go downstairs. You, so it usually have a microwave and a sink and uh, what else? Microwave and a sink and a fridge. So you go there, make a cup of coffee, do some, so that's a kitchenette. So you, in the kitchenette, because it's very small, one wall um, layout works so perfect. Or maybe the kitchen is really small. If it's a very small space, then one wall uh, layout. Then we also have the U-shaped. So it's, the layout is just like a letter U. And then we have the U shape is, 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 is good if you want more storage. So if you're looking for more storage and your kitchen is big enough to take in a U shape, then that's, that will work perfectly for you. Then we also have the, um, the L shape. L shape is, um, the, it, it's, you know, it looks very sleek and elegant. If you are looking for a minimalist kitchen, you know, uh, L shape works well because then it doesn't come with so much cabinetry and so there is a lot of space and they can, you know, put in an island too if there is enough space for that. Then we have the galley layout. The galley layout is, it works best if you have like two chefs or two cooks at the same time. So there is enough space for both of you to work at the same time without bumping into each other or stepping on each other's um, so what how toes. does that look like it's it's like it's um parallel to mm. each other so you have like two uh i don't know two ones on opposite sides so okay. that's how it works and then we have the g shaped the g shape is like an, um, a twist of the u shape so at the end of the open you, you know how you, you is so you just have maybe like an island at that end where you put some stools and so that makes it um, a G shape. A G shape. A G shape. Okay. So those are the most common um, kitchen layouts that we have. So like I said before, the one that is functional, the, the best for you is the one that is functional for you and then the one that works for you. So you check your kitchen size and your lifestyle and your usage mm. and then you choose what works for you. Okay, so in all of that, what are the appliances, flooring, lighting, and all that that is best that you should include in the kitchen? Okay, um, that's a very broad question. <laughs> so, <laughs> slim it down as much as possible. Okay, so um, the appliances for, apart from, okay, there are so many things to put in the kitchen, right? So, okay, I would rather say what are the very important appliances that every kitchen must include. Okay, every kitchen must include. So we already know, of course, there is the fridge is there. That's for the fridge must be there. The microwave, very important. The oven, very important. The, um, then you have the, the cooker hood, the one that takes out the hot air out of the uh -huh, out of the kitchen so that is also very key i know sometimes people use this small expeller that one is it's not effective. Do the job no it doesn't do the job at all so it's a cooker hold the one the, the one that is that sits on top of your stove but there is this new one that is called a um, it's called a down, down draft system so with that um like you know some kitchens you find out that there is no space to put that big one, okay? But with the new, the downdraft uh, system, it is Comes installed. With the, yes, I think I've seen that yes, before. Yes, with the, yes. Okay, so, so that's you, more practical. Yeah. So right from when you're cooking, it takes all the heat mm. from the burner. So you press the button and just, it just comes up mm. from the countertop. And then when you're done, you press the button and then it, it goes back in. So that's, that's those are the, Key things, there are, there are so many other things that you can have, but those are the major appliances that you should have in your kitchen. So what yes. about lighting? What kind of lighting? What kind of flooring 
should mm -hmm. we have? Because so for lighting, there are three uh, lighting that uh, you should have in a kitchen. We have the ambience lighting, the one that just like lights up the whole space. Then we have the um, accent lighting. Is the maybe your chandelier? You want to put your pendant or your chandelier is decorative. And then we have the very the most important one is the task lighting. This, the task lighting is the one you have usually have under your cabinet, under the um, upper cabinet, because that illuminates your countertop. Mm -hmm. Okay, so without that, without the task lighting, um, it will be if you're cooking, it will be really what your maybe you're chopping something, your veggies on the countertop, you will discover that your shadow, because you're standing and you're back in the, the ambience lighting, you're, you're, you will cast a shadow on what you're doing. So you won't really have um, this brightness that you're looking for. But if you have your task lighting, which is installed under your um, the wall, cabinet. Yeah, the wall cabinet. So the kitchen is nicely lit. You, you see your pot of soup or whatever you're cooking. You see what you're chopping, especially at night. So. Well, that's the that thing. All right, um, we're due for a short break. Okay. We'll be back shortly. Please stay with us. Welcome back, everybody, and you're still watching Space and Style. And Joy Agbamuche is still here in the studio with us discussing kitchen designs. Okay, so before we went to the break, we were talking about the very essentials in the kitchen. Yeah. But however, what about painting? Because I know for some people, they don't even like tiles. I've gone to a lot of kitchens that they don't use tiles. They use paint, in, in, paint rather, yeah. instead of tiles. Is that a difference in the kitchen that has paint, uh, paint or tiled? Okay, so for the, the tiles, I prefer that tiles in the kitchen. First of all, it um, g gives a good grip to the cabinet. When you are installing your wall cabinet, the t a tiled wall holds it firmer than you know just the block because sometimes the blocks are soft so you don't you can't really tell whether it's going to hold it up or not mm. so it's safer you know for the wall the walls to be tied and then it's also because you know kitchen water and all of that it's easier to maintain okay, backsplash backsplash yeah it's easier to clean so for maintenance and keeping your kitchen clean Tight, you know, it's easier as well to clean and maintain. Okay, so um, if you decide to use tiles, what colors do you think are it's the best? And if you decide to paint, what colors do you think okay, for kitchens, I, 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 um, I usually so colors that are timeless, colors that are you know that are calm, and um, for for your walls, that you should go for colors that colors that. Will, taking anything because for example if you put like a red tile on your kitchen wall it's going to start detecting every other thing that you do in that kitchen and because it's tied it's, you can't just wake up and break it and retile so you use something use a, a neutral color that can go with anything just in case you decide to to swap something you know, just to change, maybe update your kitchen so that your world doesn't become a problem. Because I was going to mm -hmm. that, that um, for those of us, or for some people that mm -hmm. have old kitchens, yeah. how can they revamp their kitchen okay. so that it will become modern, but they don't have to rip it apart generally <laughs> because we all know how much all this thing cost. Okay. Having a new kitchen is very expensive. Yeah, it so is. what do you advise? Okay, so if you want to, to update your kitchen without uh, ripping it off, you can ob ob start. You can spray the cabinet, but that's only if the cabinet is still strong. So if it's still holding up, it's still firm, it's not falling apart. But what if it's done with um, probably HDF or MDF? How possible is that to respray it? No, you can you can spray HDF. Ooh. Yes, we do spray HDF. Yeah. It's possible to, except if it's that's the matte HDF. Okay. So what if it's glossy? Matte. You can't do that. No, no, because That'd already be you see, you can't, you can't, uh, the paint mm. cannot stay on it. Not yeah. The glossy, okay. mm. So what are the other things that we can also do? The hardwares, the hardwares are the handles, the knobs. 
you can you can change those ones and then it should really make it pop and make it look new. Um, you can change the 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 rudders and the drawers. You can because modern kitchens now are, are just um, like seamless and um, they just you just touch it and it opens, right? Mm -hmm. So you can change those hinges. You can change the runners so that you can just become um, auto, uh, open automatically when you touch them. You can also uh, install smart storage systems if it is possible. Um, the smart storage systems are the, your play track, the inbuilt play track. The, oh, so yeah. we've moved on from the exposed one to the inbuilt one. Yeah, because that's, that's how modern kitchens are wow. built now. So modern kitchens, you don't go to your kitchen and see uh, plates and everything and racks on your countertop. Everything is hidden. Mm. Even right in the fridge now is hidden. So you can have inbuilt kitchen, inbuilt fridge. Okay, that, that flushes have, with a cabinet. Yes, you okay. have ex the same the same cabinet door, inbuilt uh, dishwasher. So you don't see well, you don't see you don't know there's a dishwasher there except you touch and then it opens. So you can put in your um, you can install smart storage systems. Like for you can if it's possible because why I say if it's possible is that those um, the cabinets are built specifically for those storage systems. For example, the inbuilt plate rack. So if you are fortunate to have a um, maybe a cabinet that is exactly the same size with the plate rack. You know, some are 60 cm, some are 90 cm. So if your cabinet, for instance, is 60 cm or 90 cm, so it means you can install it in your old kitchen, right? So you can add all of those things and then it will help to... <laughs> change your appliances too. Yeah, you can change your appliances. You can also swap your some of your wall cabinets. You can swap it with uh, open shelving because open shelving is also trending now. You can. I was going to go there, so don't even go there yet. I was okay. going to ask you about trends for 2022. Okay, yeah. okay. So you can also change your cabinet doors to glass doors as well. So that, that can... All glass. No, the, you know, it's framed with wood. Oh, okay, yeah. Yes. So, yes, no, not, not all glass. No, but I've seen kitchens that are all glass. And yeah. I don't, I really don't understand how practical that is. Or is it for aesthetics? Just mainly aesthetics. For, uh, well... All glass. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the trends. But how practical is that? So, it, so like, you know, I'm going back to what I said when I started, that your lifestyle, your family, if maybe you have your... Your, the kind of family you have, you can live with having that all glass. You don't so have children that play ball in the house. Uh -huh. so or maybe they are out of the house. They are all grown. Uh, or maybe you guys don't even go to the kitchen. You have your chef and your mates and all of that. So it, it, can, it works because That's it's really, 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 it looks so beautiful. Very beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Especially Very beautiful. The, if you put and the lighting. Some of them, yes, I was going to say that. You mm -hmm. see the lighting in and yeah. it's so beautiful. Yeah. So what are the latest trends for 2022? So the latest trends, I'll start from colors. So, uh, because, you know, after the pandemic, people started to adopt nature into bringing nature into the home. So I've seen some uh, blues, you know, because blues is a reference to the sea, to the sky, or blue cabinets. We are seeing a green, like sage green, leaf greens for cabinets. And then um, automated um, appliances and fixtures as well. It's trending now. Um, we are seeing lots of uh, glass cabinetry as well, like we mentioned before, all glass. Then we are, um, another thing that is trending is um, floor to ceiling cabinet. I love that. Yeah, it's floor to so ceiling cabinet. Beautiful. Yes, <laughs> I love that. So yeah. that's it. That's also trending. Then um, statement piece. A faucet is also trending. So gone are the days where you just buy those dwarf boring taps for your sink. So the the, the, the faucets that are trending now, they just they are so stylish. They look like an accessory 
but it's mm. a four set. And well, they how move. functional are they? They are very are they functional, functional and strong as well. And then well, another thing that is trending is a auto, I, I said automated appliance and automated fixtures as well. What do you mean automated? You're just saying automated. Can you please explain to <laughs> really people what you mean by automated? For, a, for example, the tap. So you don't need to. It's 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 um. You know, it uses a sensor. Once your hand goes close to it, it comes on in the kitchen. So that's an example of an automated uh, appliance. So what about system. the ovens and um, yes. fridges? Do you have automated ones too? Yes, yeah, they are. everything is so many. So how does it, an automated fridge work? <laughs> so, so there is this fridge that is, I, I'm, I'm not into <laughs> <laughs> computers so but then there is this way that comes with a screen in front of the fridge so you can do amazing things on that screen so some of these fridges they show they work like like a normal tv as well but it's on is on the fridge door okay right? a television mm -hmm. infused in yes on the, a on fridge. the door of the fridge yes wow and then they have this um dishwasher as well. this dishwasher that is automated in the sense that you it doesn't have a handle if you just like uh, knock on it three times it opens by itself then automated doors and drawers you just just a touch and then just it, a tap it, yeah just a tap it opens so those are automated stuff you know wow and then, um people are incorporating this you know alexa thing voice activation into mm. the kitchen so alexa you know, bring yeah, my food yeah <laughs> alexa then alexa can help you bring up your recipe whatever wow. so those are, yeah wow mm. interesting but unfortunately this is all we can take on the discussion this week but definitely Joylin will be here with us next week for the concluding part of the discussion. Up next is the design tip of the week. Enjoy. My name is Dr. Maureen Kebasharu, CEO and Creative Director at Deria Options Limited, an interior design firm. So today we're going to talk about how to make a space look luxurious and without breaking a bank. All right, so. Um, I guess today we're going to talk about just tips, tips, tips on how to do that. So the first thing I want to talk about is the use of colors. So what are the luxurious colors? So we're going to, we're going to talk about colors like white, gray, and most importantly, metallic colors. Bronze, gold, silvers, copper, um, and all that. So usually when you're going to combine these colors together, you're going to do it in a ratio two to one. So you're going to use like the grays, the white, the blacks, the brown, and you're going to put in um, like one metallic color, like a gold, or you're going to use like a silver. So another thing you can do to get that feel is to ensure that your space is totally clutter free. Right. So like that, we try to put in a lot of shelves that are very decorative and stylish shelves, you know, in spaces. And we use natural materials. The use of natural materials in a space makes it look luxurious. So let's take a feature wall, for example. You can put stone on a feature wall or you can do um, like wood, like a wooden panel on a wall, on a feature wall or on any other wall for that matter. So the use of natural materials like stones, like wood, you know, gives you that luxury feel that you want. Um, also, another thing you can do to get that luxurious feel in a space is the use of the right lighting. So we want to focus on ensuring you, f you create the sense of space. So you don't want too much walls in your space. You don't want too much furniture in a space that you want to give that feel of luxury. So you want to, or you, or you want to use a chandelier that is very dramatic. So use a beautiful, dramatic chandelier. So it can be maybe the one item that you're going to spend a little bit on, you know, then the pieces that you're going to put around, maybe the artifacts, and the um, accessories that you're going to put around the golds and the silvers, the butterflies, like metallic butterflies, you want to put in your recess walls and you want to put a light to focus on it, you know. And um, also, another important thing to do in a space to make it feel like 
a million dollars is actually the use of the right materials. So if you look at your furniture, for example, you want to use materials that are soft you know, to the skin. So we use suede materials, you want to use velvet materials, you want to use like 100% cotton materials in your space on furniture. And also you want to use furniture that are very easy to keep clean. You don't want furniture that will gather dust over time because when you have furniture like that in your space over time, it makes your space look kind of tacky. So you want furniture that has surfaces that is very easy to clean in your space. Um, so today, let me give you the tip to take away Way. So your space, if you want to make it feel like a million dollar space, just change those throw pillows and you can use a color like here we've got blues and we've got gold in it that is leather, you know, that gives a sense of luxury and also you can have a really beautiful artwork, you know, that looks expensive on your wall and you put an accent light over it. So I hope you've been able to learn one or two things today. See you again next week. Bye. And to move to the concluding segment of the show, let's hear from our artisan on the intricacies of his craftsmanship. Uh, I started this carpentry business after I've been trained locally and uh, and I also went for I also went for technical knowledge of it. Uh, when I was with my Oga, I started the training in 1987 precisely, and I finished by 1990. I still went to technical for between 1990 to 1992. After 1992, I started this work at uh, Uribo. Oribu side, Osun State. I started with uh, building of our local government by then, Oranya North. So, with one of the companies by then, after that one, I came to Lagos around 1993, 94. Ah, well, as a poor boy born by poor parents, I don't have any option. Because after my secondary school, I intended to go further, but due to lack of fund, I have to embark on this one. And uh, it's because of uh, my background, that's why I learned this work. Uh, our role on consortium are so many. Number one, we are to do the, the phone work. We are to start the phone work again. We are to do the phone work. We have to stand the column, if there is column there. We have to do the German floor. And uh, after the German floor, then if there is decking, linted, after linted, then we do roof and uh, so many other things are uh, where we are talking about construction. And uh, it's not limited to building alone. You can also still do furniture in the house. You can construct the bridge or drainage. Or any other thing that are related to carpentry, sir, is my profession. Ah, a good carpenter must be at least half a elementary education level if you want to be a good carpenter. Because when we are talking about carpentry work, it's also regard uh, some calculation. If you don't know anything about education, you can't calculate well. That's why you see so many carpenters, they can't work well because their level of uh, learning, or let me say the experience, is so low. If you want to be a good carpenter, at least for now, you must be a, a school sat living student before you can become a very good carpenter. And uh, it's also regard, because now at this now, by the time we started our home around 90, nothing like uh, cutting machine or, or drilling machine or any other thing that we are using now, we mainly use hand by then. Because early can you see anywhere you can find machine. But now we have sewing machine, planing machine, cutting machine, and any other thing that you can talk of that is so available to make the work more easier than where we started by 1990. Ah, 
Number one, what more be physically fit you if you want to do carpentry? A sickler cannot do this work because he regards energy. And any work that regards energy, a physical person needs to do it. So if you want to be a good carpenter, you have to be fit. Ah, there are many challenges. Oh. <laughs> If I'm going to go with my own experience, there are many challenges. At times, uh, if you are not, uh, if you don't do the work properly, it can bring challenges. If you work with a dubious person that will not pay you your right money or your, your agree amount before you started the work, that's another challenge. But the most challenges is that yeah, in terms of fund, because if you want to establish this work very well, you want to do carpentry work, and you want to establish it, it regards a lot of money. Before you have to buy some machine, some equipment before you can start it. But this one we are doing now is just a locally work, just to find what you are going to eat. But if you want to establish full carpentry work, yeah, to say you will consult door, you consult a uh, uh, linter, you will consult this, you will consult that. It requires a lot of money. So you can say fund is one of the challenges. Ah, so far I don't have money to buy all those equipment. I am enjoying this site work now. They call me for uh, linted. I will come and do that one for them. They call me for standing column. I come and do that one for them. They come in for slabbing or decking. I come to do it for them. Or they come in for roofing or any repairs or drainage construction. I say it's a lucrative job. It brings money. It's a lucrative job. It brings money. If you are so faithful to the work, it's bringing money. <laughs> because by the grace of God, I build out, buy cars. So it's a lucrative job. And that is where we wrap up today's show. And thank you so much for watching. And remember to watch the concluding part of our discussion on Efficient Kitchens next week. Same time and on the same station. I am Olamide Onifade. And until I see you again next week, this is Space and Style.